Okay, I've got a few requests to show these guys how I'm tying my jig setups. It's a combination of a lot of different people's ideas. And the idea is to get your odds as high as you can. Like getting this caught in the net and having the fish just break right off the hooks. Instead, this slides up and down the line. This also allows it to free fall away from the hooks a little bit. Um, the fish nabs on it, it's gonna get a hook in the face. Um, this is a really good setup. It slides through. The key here is when it slides, it hits a bumper, and when it comes back up, you have the, the two hooks facing in opposite directions. So, again, when it slides up, it hits the bumper facing opposite directions like this. And the way I have it tied, the two, I have two different knots here. This is something that a lot of guys don't talk about. They just talk about who's got the best knot. There's a use for different knots. In this case, what we do here is we have a bend right here. See how this tip is bent this direction. You can go either direction, doesn't matter. And this one is straight. You have a bumper, a rubber bumper right here. It's like that. Now the key here is, I have a snelled hook right here and it goes through the front side. So it comes down and out. If you don't see that, let's get a little closer. This way, when it hits that straight piece right there with the bumper, it brings your hook straight up and down. Your other one you've tied so they're opposite directions. It ups your odds. You're going to grab it from either side when it grabs it back here. I don't know if you've noticed the difference in my old ones and my new ones are a ridiculous amount of size drop in hooks from these guys. All right, I have done hours and hours, thousands of hours of watching these fish come up and grab the back of a shank on a coho killer, shake it, follow it for five minutes, and then take off. If had I slowed the boat down, sped up, went side to side, it would have thought it was real after it bit at the back of it and attacked it just like a lion attacking a gazelle. No difference. So when you do think you have a shaker, slow your boat down, speed it up, turn it left or right. Same with jigging. You think there is a little bump, drop it back down. Don't bring it back in. It, it could be following it around. It's looking for that prey to stumble one way or the other. Then it pounces.
So all of our hooks are now going to the top one is a one aught right here, and the bottom one is a side wash number one. Again, back to the knots. This one is snelled in, coming through the front. This one's important too. It will not hang straight in line like that's doing if you do any other knot than this. See, we have just a regular fisherman's knot. Just a regular fisherman's knot tying that one in. Okay, so with the bend, it allows it to free fly up and down your line. Also gives it a more natural feel. And this isn't jumping and bouncing around in the fish's mouth working your hooks out because we're in a barbless area. These haven't been barbed yet, but they will be barbed before they hit the Puget Sound anyways. In a barbless area, it's really important to run these two hooks. Often I'll catch it on one of these. The other one is stuck in the side of its mouth somewhere else acting as my second barb. So running one hook barbless, it's, you know, your odds are just a lot lower. If you're barbless, it's important to run these two hooks like this and barbless. You don't want this flopping around in its face, working it as leverage. You see, it's got no leverage here. So when the fish is fighting, it's just the hooks and it's going to be harder to spit a barbless um, with this weight bobbling around on its face. Okay, that's really important. So. I hope that helps a lot. I'm going to have a lot of underwater video footage of this coming pretty soon. This is just a quick uh, version of the way I've set these up. It's a lot of other guys that know how to do it. I'm Captain Noob because I just started this a couple years ago, but I'm super critical and take everything to a professional level. So I want to catch a lot of fish. I got a lot of stuff pre-tied. I'm going smaller here, just like I said on there. A lot of them I've already done that for fishing this year. Um, same with the same with these bad boys. We go to smaller now See we've got a lot smaller tail hooks in there even on the coho killer. We've dropped size good luck out there guys and hope I helped you out a little bit